Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my series on climatology on my channel The Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also share the videos with others as well. So in this session on climatology, we are going to talk about applied climatology where the nature and scope of climatology will be again discussed. So for these nuances in the study of climatology, let's go ahead and learn about it. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about applied climatology. Now we have covered almost the entire climatology right from the atmosphere till the last lecture on global climate change. Now it's time to understand what is the application of these climatological concepts and how it is applied in terms of our social systems, not just looking into the natural part of climatology. That is where the application comes into the picture. So in simple words, if you want to define applied climatology is what? It is the study of effects of climate on natural and social systems in one line if you want to say it, right? Apart from that, many scholars have defined applied climatology in different ways. For example, H. Landsberg and W. C. Jacobs in 1951 defined this applied climatology as what? As scientific analysis of climatic data in the light of its application for a particular purpose. So basically using climatological data, its analysis and finally interpreting the result in terms of its particular purpose. That was the first definition if you see. Then what we see in 1987, K. Smith actually defined it again. So it is basically what? Use of achieved and real time climatic information to solve a variety of social, economic and environmental problems for clients, for people, for managers in the field of agriculture, industry and energy. So this is basically a utility based definition. Then what we have is in 1989, another definition by, by G. A. M. Marotz. So he defined applied climatology as scientific use of climatic data and theoretical constructs for social particular problems. Now, basic idea of applied climatology, if you look into all the definitions is basically using the knowledge of climatology to actually solve or mitigate the problems in real world in social system right so that is the whole idea behind this applied climatology that if we have this earth which has a particular climate and if we know it how can we resolve certain issues that are actually linked from this natural system to the human system so in what ways we can apply this climato climatological knowledge to solve the real world problems that may come from social economic environmental perspectives Right. So this is the basic idea. Now let's elaborate further more. So if you understand, let's now focus our attention on the direct and indirect impacts of the elements of weather and climate on human beings. And then accordingly, what we see is where this knowledge can be applied. Right. So we start with the impact of climate on first natural systems. So if you observe climate and natural systems, how do we relate it? Remember, our natural system comprises of these spheres, lithosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, cryosphere, remember, the frozen sphere that is important. So there is a continuous interaction between these spheres as we know and climate is an important linkage that connects all these spheres. So remember, climate is a linkage thing. Remember, it is one of the processes part which connects all these systems together. That's where climatic knowledge is important to actually regulate or understand all these important natural systems. So processes in the atmosphere inherently affect the other spheres as we know, right? Because atmosphere is the entire global coverage. So first of all, let's understand the impact of climate on all these spheres, which will help us to understand that how it can be applied. So users of climatic data, if you see what they do is they analyze all the data and try to understand its ideal situation in which the climate is influencing all these natural systems and then accordingly they plan the policies. So when we see lithosphere, what do you see? Lithosphere is about the land surface majorly. So elements of climate like temperature, humidity, wind circulation all impact the erosional processes. Remember geomorphology, erosional processes where you have fluvial, aeolian, marine, groundwater, glacial, periglacial processes and remember how it is linked to the climate part, right? So this is important. Glaciers and winds also shape the landforms. So remember climatic geomorphology, if you observe or climatic geomorphologists study the influence of climate on these landforms as well. Right, because it is directly linked with lithospheric denudational processes. Apart from that, atmosphere, 
where you have change in temperature, humidity, pressure, all these things are linked to what you have on the landscape, which is water bodies, sheets, biogeochemical cycle regulation. That is where it is completely linked. That is where through material and energy exchange it facilitates. Then hydrosphere, very common impact on fisheries, coastal system, marine ecosystem. Everything is clearly linked to this hydrosphere where you have the climatic processes operating. So human activities like deforestation, urbanization, industrialization, concretization, all these processes have an impact on the entire climatic system. And that is where we are concerned. Then biosphere, if you observe the interaction between living organisms, that is where you have predator prey relationship, diseases, health, insect infestations, and so many things that are happening in the biotic segment. And remember, biotic component is also in terms or in sync with the climate as we know, right? So that is where it is influencing biosphere system as well. Then the cryosphere system. Remember, we have already talked about global climate change where you have melting of glaciers, right? Due to global warming, Greenland, Antarctica, several other areas. So that is what we see is that entire climatic system, if you observe this image, is linking this cryosphere, atmosphere, oceans, biosphere, right? Lithosphere, all these spheres are linked by this entire climatic system. So if you see that climate is an umbrella or a system in which you have several components of these particular spheres and climate links all of them together. That's why applied climatology when we study, we need to understand that these concepts of climatology are not in isolation. They are actually interlinking all these spheres and that is why we need to understand the applied aspect of it. And that is the whole idea behind the nature and scope of climatology that we see, right? So climatology's nature is actually integrative. It is interdisciplinary, right? And scope is that it provides us knowledge, information to actually resolve certain problems of social, economic and environmental nature across all the realms that we know, right? So all the spheres that we know. So now let's talk about climate and societal systems. So climate and agriculture, we understand already that how it is linked. So it determines our farming practices. Transportation is also dependent upon climate. So you see aviation technology. So when it is overcast or turbulent condition, low visibility condition, it is because of climatic factors where you have problems in highways, you have problems in the upper air circulation, where we have issues in the flying system. Then temperature is an important regulator, climatic parameter leading to this particular impact on the road transport as we see many times. So this is one of the most important factor. Then climate is associated to recreational activities and tourism as well. Right. And this is very common to understand that the recreational or tourism industry completely revolves around this climatic regime on Earth. Right. If it is not a good weather condition on long term, if it's a climatic condition in an area, no one would like to visit that area. People find pleasant places right to for recreational activities. So climatic impact is one of the most important thing, because when we talk about outdoor, the impact is related to climate. Right. So tracking, skiing, gliding, surfing, all these factors. Remember, even sports like football, cricket, rugby, volleyball, all these sports are also related to good weather conditions or a peculiar weather conditions. Right. And many times they are interrupted by rainfall, thunderstorms, dust storms. So positive as well and negative as well. If you find the climate is actually leading to the impact on these recreational activities, tourism activities, sport activities, if you look at. So climate is one thing that you cannot detach. You cannot keep climate in isolation with these particular societal activities. Then one of the important aspect in today's world is religious tourism. That is very common. If you look into these images in India, Kedarnath, Mansarovar Yatra, Char Dham Yatra, all these Yatras, if you see the pilgrim visits to particular areas and mountain areas. Remember, rainy seasons are avoided by tourists because of these landslide factors, right? At higher elevation, we have different levels of oxygen in different season, right? So many things which are related to these climatic factors actually influence the tourism in terms of religious tourism as well, right? So this is one of the examples that we see, right? And if you remember the Kedarnath tragedy, what happened? We Chorabari Lake outburst and cloud burst here led to this entire flooding of the entire valley and lots of lives were lost. So you have a disaster situation and it is linked with tourism and it is linked with the climatic anomaly as well or extremity as well. So that is where it is having a connection that we see, right? So all these factors are important to study. Now let's understand climate and health factor. 
Now in today's world, health factor has become one of the most important prominent factor. For example, in the smog situation in winters, when we say smoke mixes with fog and forms smog, thick layer of smog, thick layer of ozone, thick layer of particulate matter hanging around the atmosphere in cities today. What is the influence? It has lots of influence on the lungs, on the normal breathing conditions, on the organ failures and even leading to many cases cancerous activities as well. So what we see is that climate has a direct influence on the health as well and apart from that a very good example remember the health or mountain sickness that we say when you actually go for this kind of trekking in high altitude areas you can see that many people find you know nausea and vomiting and so many things happen bleeding from nose happen due to lack of oxygen in high altitudes as well. So we say that climate also determines our body regulations. Remember, one of the important things in a simplest example, you can see that high pressure systems and low pressure systems. Remember, when the atmosphere is exerting high pressure on us, then our body is behaving differently. And when there is a low pressure on us, then our body is actually adjusting to this pressure differently. Right. So even if you talk about pressure, that is major part or thrust part of the climatic regime that we have studied in different pressure bells in the world. Remember, a body will adapt to different pressure system, different temperature system. So right from Aristotle's zones of habitability, the Yukmin that we studied in the geographical thought till present scenario where people are building houses in adver adverse conditions even using science and technology. So what we have done is we have always took one thing as a serious matter where climate has something to do with our health conditions which is very serious and which is of grave concern because of this climate change happening now. So lots of disease outbursts that we see is very common these days right so pathogenic diseases and so many diseases around the world because of this climate change are happening so that is where health is one of the major factors which is in direct influence and that's where applied climatology is also not just about learning the climatic concept in isolation but actually looking into its impact on health as well so that is where you have medical science and climate science coming together and that is where it is important. So nowadays the effect of weather and climate on human health is studied under a specific branch called medical climatology and that is important. For example, what we have discussed is the certain diseases related to climate. For example, global warming and humidity may increase cases of vector borne disease like malaria, dengue and several others. So we see so many diseases happening, health impacts happening and many adaptation measures being taken by various governments, various local agencies, health agencies. So this is what we are concerned and that is what we discuss under medical climatology which is part of the applied climatology that we study. That's important to understand. So now when we have discussed in details the applied climatological aspects, so in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on other aspects of physical geography. So keep watching, stay tuned and all the best wishes to you.